welcome to today's episode of the Age of Titans. Apologies. Um, this stream uh, is going to be incredibly, uh, s like, s uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Scuffed. Thank you. It's going to be incredibly scuffed. Hello, Rukar. Um, it, today's stream is going to be incredibly scuffed. Uh, we're missing a couple people, um, and... Discord reactive images is down! Yay! So unfortunately, um, and it went down, like, at least for me, right before stream start was supposed to start. So I did not have any time in order to make backup backups for everybody's talk sprite. So unfortunately, uh, you're just gonna see a couple blank, blank spaces where each of the people are. Hopefully 29 episodes in, you know, people need the characters' voices enough. Sorry. This is, this is what happens when the sun goes out. You can't see anything anymore. No more care. You can't see the characters. Can't see the... <laughs> I should just have it be like a fully black... I, I want to run a <laughs> just game. Just a black box. <laughs> yeah, like, like have, I want to run a game at some point. Where like I I do some subtle like some subtle like m manipulation, uh, so that none of the players right none of the players have dark vision, <laughs> and oh, put no. them in a in a dungeon, and about like a minute in ask them so who has any torches? This is another part of the manipulation. None of them will have torches, and so it's just all black, and then they're trapped in. <laughs> My, my husband almost has that. Uh, I am the only one in our party of like four or five people that have dark vision, so nobody else can see but me <laughs> whenever we go somewhere. <laughs> it's great. Uh, I would also like to direct your attention. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually going to do a little something for this, right? Don't move your tokens. I'm going to move your tokens for you um, because there's going to be a thing. There's going to be a little bit of a thing, because I'm going to copy you guys. And I'm going to paste you down here. I will direct everybody to the lower half of... Why is this in GM? I just grabbed a water bottle. Uh, <laughs> pardon, more scuff. Um, it's the scuff go. episode. Let's go. It really is the scuff episode. Anyway, <laughs> I'd like to direct your attention to the bottom half of the of the screen, of the map, where you'll see uh, your characters in the uh, lower in the uh, below decks of the ship. You know, I, the I love I love that Star Trek series. Put the fuck up. Um, <laughs> Each of the, I don't know how it looks for you guys, because for me, it's a bunch of red circles. But you should see uh, where the doors are um, around. You can open them by clicking on them and close them again, again, by clicking on them. Yeah, we um, have little door icons, and some of them have the door icon with a little lock. Yeah, uh, any of the locked ones are works in progress, uh, and so are not available at the moment. Um, but, uh, any of the other rooms, um, you have access to. So you can see up there in the top left is Akko and Biz's shared room, uh, kind of split in half there. Um, and Volko down in their room. Rukar, yours is in the top right. Um. Um, I don't see anything. I just got a black screen. Uh, did I? Oh! <laughs> yeah! Because Ricard doesn't have dark vision. Oh <laughs> no. Hold on. <laughs> Hold, please, while I put some lights here in the hallway. Can you see now? Hey, folks, in the lower half? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Did I not give you your token? Oh, I never gave your token vision! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> oh, he's supposed to see the most. Uh. No, no, Valco. The irony here is I'm the one who had the good perception. I just don't have dark vision. Period. Yeah. I need I need Viz's special icon like contact lens in order to have dark vision. Oh, yeah. so at the moment you have an item that gives you dark vision, right? I did, but I have not. Yeah, I have not. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a 
it's a spell, it's like a dark vision spell powered contact lens, but I don't know if they've been recharged or anything like that if they needed to. Uh, actually, hold on. I can just give you some some goggles with a spell starting item. <laughs> with I thought you just hold gave on. Rukar an item that gave him hey. dark vision. Hey. I, I gave him a spell. Biz, oh. biz. Hey, you remember that cube you gave me that I'm probably not using? Yeah. You'd have it back. You could put dark vision on it and give it to Rukar. Yeah. They take the cube. Right. Take the cube. Uh, at a random zombie from our last session, because funny. Oh, you want me to add those zombies? Nomad. Oh, Nomad. Nomad wants to add the warp into, into this campaign. Yeah. Anyway, at this point, uh, why not? There's for, so much, like... <laughs> for context, um, in the Starfinder game... Uh, the party has encountered the warp in the form of uh, Nurgle zombies called Poxwalkers and a Cornite demon called a Bloodletter. <laughs> How many? We already got like two different kinds of zombies in this game. What's a third one? Bring it uh, on. Well, those these ones cause a miasma that just causes you to be diseased every turn, and it gets worse. You don't want like the Starfinder rules on disease are like hor. Uh, I can't horrifying. be diseased. I'll fight them. I don't care. <laughs> you can't disease me. Okay. And what did the cube of dark vision do? It lets you cast dark vision. The spell. And how much dark vision does that give you? Sixty feet. 60 feet. All right, so don't. As long as you have this item on your Rukar, you have 60 feet of dark vision. I uh, can cast. Can cast dark. Uh, 60 feet of dark vision. What does it mean to ten? You can cast it oh. 10 times a day. I assume this spell doesn't last that long. Where my hand? Like it lasts like eight hours. Oh, what the fuck? All right. So yeah, just while you have this item, you have dark vision. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. There you go, you have dark vision up to 60 feet now. Hooray. hooray. I, I think you're no the idea. only person without dark vision. You don't have uh, it either? Excuse you? You I don't have, have dark vision. I, no, I, I said I think Rukar is the only one without dark vision. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. you are correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the irony of it. I'm the, I'm the one who sees the best. I'm, my whole job on the ship is to see good. Well, dark vision is useless. To you be see good, but not at night. <laughs> to be specific, Rukar, Delver, and the lizard folk don't have dark vision. Mm. The goblins do, though. Yeah, that's good. Should, and the I bucket should, crabs um, do. Yeah. I'm a bird, not an owl. I'm not a nocturnal bird, so no dark vision for me. Okay, where's my room? Uh, it's in the top right, uh, the fourth door on the right. Top right, fourth door. On the... This one. Aw, that's cute. <laughs> yep. What is, what is that? What's that in the net? What is that? Uh, just some bits and bobs, old treasures. Uh, as you said, Rukar would have, like, picked up some knickknacks along the way. Oh, that's fair. I, like, I saw you DM the picture, and it's like, what is that, what is that in the net? <laughs> it's a big, it's sense. like a gemstone. Gotcha. Fuck it. Shiny. Yeah, you got, like, your chests that have, like, um, a couple, like, potions and s just stuff around a bucket of fish in case you get hungry in the middle of the night. Uh, Biz has his pile of miscellaneous junk that 8T has sorted in a way that makes sense to 8T, um, but Biz ruins every single time looking for something. Um, and uh, as well as, like, various things that to most other people on the ship make no sense, like whatever those two big metal barrels are. Uh, and Akko has, um, a pile of scrolls and books on his desk and uh some kind and uh some uh star reading implements take up a large chunk of the room and don't worry nomad your redeemed monster does succeed pay no attention to this weird room directly below damon <laughs> Does that does Abyss, Abyss and Akko, Do you guys have a bed in there, or is it all just full of stuff but no nowhere to sleep? These uh, are hammocks. In the oh, middle. those are hammocks. Oh, yeah. okay. I don't know why I thought they were like curtains. 
Yeah, Biz knocked down the rotating wall between these two rooms, and we just stringed the hammocks up there. Yeah, there. Oh was, so funny enough, I did actually build that as two rooms, um, and then I was like, you know what, this is gonna be Biz and Akko's. Wait, they share a room, don't they? Yeah, he totally just bust the wall down. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um. So yeah, you have your 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 room up there. Recovers in the top right. Uh, this one that is locked is Whittle Whistle's room, and this one down here is Aveline's. Uh, this room uh, is where Celeste used to sleep. Uh, this one, <laughs> uh, you can tell from the fancy bed uh, and all the blood. Um, this one is where the two lizard folks sleep, and this room is where the goblins sleep. Uh, that big room on your left is the uh, stowage, um, where all of your various supplies are. Um, so anything that's like in the ship storage is over there. Uh, and on the right, uh, in the right section uh, up above is where Avos sleeps, and in the bottom is your little prison cell, uh, where you encountered that really weird drowny. Hey, Valka, have you seen Lucar's room? I have. I've seen everybody's room. Why? What's up? No, I'm just curious because I just wanted to, I, I, I missed everyone's reaction to just the neck instead of a bed. Oh, I thought that was cute. Um, hey, hey, Nomad, I want you to roll me, like... Oh, no. Three d20s, and then DM me on Discord what result you got. If you're oh, still no. here, buddy. <laughs> I love, I love having no matter roll for shit. It's so funny. Just having someone. Yeah, gotcha. they're still I'll here. Great. Three d twenties. Yep. Uh, and yeah. So your tokens down there um, will be just for like when you guys are are down in that area. Um, And back up top is where is like the the more combat map. Uh, okay. Man, sure is a good thing our ship didn't get torn asunder. Also, yeah. uh, the combat might happen on the lower floor at some point, so. Awesome. Do well to remember. I mean, you never know when a tentacle monster might show up and shove its tentacles inside the lower part of the ship, and you gotta fight it off down there. This is the real reason you built the lower half of the ship, isn't it? Maybe. Um, cool. <laughs> ooh, 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 good numbers from Nomad. Thank you, buddy. Um, good for you or good for us? Uh, good for me. Uh, I mean, not necessarily, because it means that I have to manage a lot of stuff now, but... Um, oh, boy. <laughs> oh my god, Jess. Sako. Tentacles in Bisako's room, that's just a special night. <laughs> god. Uh... Alrighty. That, that's where someone takes hunger of Hadar a little too literally. Listen. All I'm saying is that magic has intent, and if your intention is not to hurt somebody, then, in my opinion, you d you don't hurt hurt them. Um, so anyway, God, I need like seven fucking monitors. I swear. Uh, so, oh, I moved you guys. Uh, so here's where you are, and here's where the phoenix went down. <laughs> Here's the sun. Well, it's not the sun right now. It's the sun, it's just not in the sky. Here comes the sun. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> the party's singing as this comet flies at the oh ocean. Oh my god. <laughs> what is that an icon of? Uh, it is the literally a phoenix. Oh. Uh, so this is from the Roll20, like, uh, free imagery, but here it is zoomed up. 
Oh, now it's I like, see. It's okay. Like out. It does. <laughs> Just Maybe imagine it. Bit... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Maybe this is a bit insensitive, but it does kind of look like a piece of charcoal right now. The poor thing. Good mindset to be in. Um, so. <laughs> It is the 15th of Harvior as the, um, well, the sun rose for, like, a couple seconds. <laughs> it rose. We got chased by Croc. We got attacked. We, we dodged some rocks. It's been a long day. <laughs> yeah! You know what? Uh, make me... <laughs> Uh, Drex, as the navigator, roll me a d8. Actually, roll me 5d8. I mean... Theoretically, shouldn't navigation be easier because now we have nothing but stars? That's not what this is for. Uh, oh. So, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so this is the path that your ship made while you were fleeing from Croc. <laughs> Uh, and that is where your ship went on the 15th. <laughs> cool. Um, hey, okay. Yeah, what's up? Before we get too deep into this, can we get a little funky? Oh, funky, you say? Can you be a worm for me? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had that redeem. I was like, hmm. Yeah, I yeah. I was I like, could, I have the point for this. Yeah, I could be a worm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I am Scuff a worm. stream with the worm. I am a worm. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you. How for long is me. it? <laughs> You're welcome. How long is Akko gonna be thriving with this, Drex? Because this is the sky forever now. <laughs> Hello, Shaper and Damon. And then Damon. Hello. <laughs> no light pollution, starry sky. I mean, there are torches on the ship, but yeah. No real light pollution, at least not in this section of the world. Astian's probably a different thing because it's a big old city. Hmm. I'm sure the sky looks gorgeous, uh, despite the fact there's also, like, no moon, but hey. I mean, hey, at least the sky itself hasn't fallen out of the Shut. sky. Shut! Shut it. We cannot As incur that wrath. That. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, uh, so... Yeah, uh, this, the moons, the two moons are still there, it's just very hard to pick them out in the sky. Actually, is anybody looking up at the moons right now? Am I trying to see them? Yeah, that's uh, sure I, I am. I, I, just, I, I just now realized my mic was muted when I had to step out for a quick second. Oh of my course. god. <laughs> Welcome oh, well. back. Um, um, yeah, so uh, you're, you're, you're like looking up trying to pick out the, the moons, and then you see a brief flash of light um, from where you presume one of them to be. It's like very small. Very small flash of light, but yeah, you see, you see like a flash of. Actually, I need to see what this would be. Oh yeah, as I said while I was muted, the sun's gone, but the clouds remain. True. Um. Ah, it is a flash of bluish light. It's curious. Hmm. 
So, what would you like to do? What was the game plan last time? I forgot. Everyone has apparently we... rallied that we need to go to the Phoenix. So I think that's where well, we're going. No, no, wait, no, remember, we said that, but then K made it apparent that we had to go through the Bone Isle to get to it. Well, yeah, but you guys have gone through there before. That's where you it's met the Draco Hydra. It's basically a straight shot. More or less. Though yeah. I don't really know what help we could offer going to the going towards the Phoenix. Well, it'd be less help and more so hopefully find some answers, I think. Maybe. You know, maybe it might just be dangerous. Well, you know, it's a phoenix. It might just got sick and croaked and might just get reborn later. It's a phoenix, that's what they do. But if it gets reborn and it can't swim... Yeah, birds, maybe we should are... go. We should probably go help with the sun. Yeah, at least get close to see what's going on. I quite, I quite like being able to see during the day. I'm sure you do too. <laughs> Give us yeah, CPR. And, yeah, and you know, not exactly. The world sort of needs the sun. I think and you mean CPR. That's a Balco funny more way to warn a little. <laughs> uh, but there's also and it's also that huge warning from the shark that just that where they said, due to the sun being out of the sky, the abyss grows. The abyss now. The, the abyss is now basically making its way to the surface even more. <laughs> <laughs> Smack the biz. <laughs> Let's see, where did I put the end? Oh, not there. I know I put it down somewhere. Uh, when there's some some downtime, Biz will uh go go try and find Falco. Okay, I imagine he's probably like in his room or something, or somewhere below decks, just like doing stuff. A loud knocking can be heard. Hey, Valko. We can actually use the below deck map now. Yeah, use the map that I spent a lot of time on. Yay. Yeah, but uh, the Balco will go over and open nope, the door. Open the door, damn you. I want to go in. <laughs> I'm just going to be in here. It's, it's a moment between you two, so I'm just going to be in the room. Your <laughs> <laughs> car just like messing with the door. <laughs> Come on, fucking open. No, and like not, and not, and not even that, just trying to get the wingspan in there. That's not even like a, that's not even like a thing with the belt. That's just the wingspan because he's a bird. Like, damn it! Uh, yeah, well, so Valco, how are you holding up with the black razor situation? As fine as always. Why do you ask? Well, I was going to give this to you. Uh, this morning, but the sun fell out of the sky and we got chased by a, a crocodile god. So I was a bit busy. And uh, this will present the Ring of Mind Shielding. It is a ornate uh, brass ring with a pulsating, slightly glowy brain. All of the like inner like veins sort of glow uh, like, a, like a light, a faint purple. And if you, like, squish it, it has a very weird texture <laughs> that is not metal, but also not flesh. <laughs> Volko will take the ring and, like, kind of hold it between his index finger and his thumb and, like, kind of look it over. And there's a, a pause, and then he looks at you and he says, I thought you were planning to propose to Akko. What? Weren't you going no, to marry him? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a proposal. This is just... It's to make Black Razor shut up. He'll still be able to hear everything around you, but at least you won't be jabbering in your, in your head. Oh, I... I mean... Tenway has one of these. I know what it does. I was trying to make a joke. Thank oh. you. I appreciate that. Uh, can, I ask, can I ask you something? Sure. 
How does it feel to be in love with Akko, anyway? Uh, um... I... <sighs> um... It feels good, but I also really don't know how to put, put it into words. I'm not all that good with emotional junk. That's why I mostly keep... Why do you think I, <laughs> I'm always working on the ship or something else? I don't know. But... It probably feels something uh, close to what you feel with Damon, if I'm reading that even remotely correctly. What? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm a good night! What? This leaves. Baffled, confused. He le Volko looks out the door and watches you, like, as you le run off, I guess. No, come back here. What did you mean by that? Did Fizz just no. go on? <laughs> yeah, Fizz just in the room. Okay. <laughs> Volko is just going to go back to his, his desk and spend some time attuning to the ring. Volko. Yeah. After about an hour, you finish attuning to the ring. Mm hmm. Well, congratulations. Now you have to talk out loud if you want me to say. direction and hope listening. It's probably better that way. It's, it's really true. all... Right. Go ahead. It can feel us getting closer. Gross. That's it's strict not it's strictly I, a work deal. That is not what I closer to a sh Volko's tail twitches at being called a flesh bag. Somehow that irritates him. <laughs> Pardon me for not having carnal desires for a being that is not made the same material. <laughs> What do you mean? We're getting closer to a shard of yours. You can feel us getting physically closer to it. And not so. It's one that's getting farther. You can sense the specifics of them. Not before. Sebastian's mind wasn't strong enough. It's a better conduit. And I used to be. But you can't sense what is holding those shards, just that we're near one. Just that we sir. Right. Balco is just gonna go probably lay down on the bed and ignore Black Razor now. <laughs> I think I'm good, personally. I am also good. Assuming this is all, like, directly after, like, the chase scene, and, like, just a few, like... If this is all, like, directly after the chase, and we already decided we're setting off to try and... 
investigate the crash site of where the phoenix landed. Uh, I feel like everyone's probably just trying to unwind after that and just meet, just try and get them shut eye. Absolutely, and Drex, you are able to make your gill investigation check. Make me an intelligence check. Nice, you have a word for it now. Eleven. Um, unfortunately, uh, you are still... Or what was the DC for it? I think it's on your sheet. Eighteen, yeah. So you are unable to um, ascertain any new uh, insights into Gil's language. Passes. And we'll use your navigator's tools for the next day because you guys had already moved on this day running away from rock. So we've gotten a long rest then? Yes, you get a long rest. It's now technically a new day. Um, can I roll that daily perception check just to see if there's any immediate danger around the ship if we're traveling? Uh, sure. And remember that it is at normal. Yeah. Uh, and I assume it has to be like a, like it has to be like around the ship itself. It can't be up in the crow's neck because even with that sixty feet of uh, even with well, that no, that's that's the point. Is that like if you're in your <clears throat> crow's nest, you gain advantage, which counteracts the disadvantage of the darkness. I'll take that. Uh, I'll be up in crow's next I'll attempt to do a perception check at normal. No advantage, no disadvantage. Normal. So let's see how this goes. Perception. 17. Not bad. I'll get yeah. rolled a 6. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you are... Oh my god. I forgot the toggles on this thing. Um, you... <laughs> 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 Shut up. Um, you uh, do not see any dangers around the ship today. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, this is for like to spend the day repairing the ship. Absolutely. Can I assist with that? Um. Sure. Cool. I mean, you're a first mate, so you could, like, just spend the day with a different class to help. Uh, using oh. 40 units of wood to recover 4d4 plus 12 health. That's uh, 41. Alrighty. Plus 1d4 plus 1 from, from a mending. 43. I imagine, I know Angel's not here, but I know that, I think they said Damon and Avos may also both have mending. I think they mentioned that last time. And that they yes. were also using that to try to help mend up the ship. <laughs> yes, go ahead and, um, go ahead and roll two more mendings. Do you want to do that, Heather? Or should I? Uh, yeah, I can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's ten. 
Let's go, max fours. Fucking go. Alright, that puts us at 217 health. Which is actually pretty good. We're basically just putting band-aids on this thing to just get it to pretty, where it needs to pretty go. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. The ship looks very... Lo looks like a very old quilt uh, blanket that just has, like, new patches, like, slapped onto it every couple of years. It's seen better days. Mm-hmm. What, what did the ship even originally look like? I don't know. You, my brother in Christ, you made the sandwich. <laughs> uh, the ship of Theseus. Subway of Theseus. Anyway. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you, you don't know what I was going to say. I guarantee it, and I'm not going to say it on stream. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Actually, I think it the ship is at higher health than it was before the encounter. Really? I think so. <laughs> or it was real close. Good to know we patched it up just enough. I think we're good for now. We will need more wood. I feel like at this point we need a, we need a new ship. I am cooking. Um. Oh. What you cooking? PM. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, fun. Well, now I'm gonna worry about it. I'm not. <laughs> I'm glad someone won't. I'm looking forward to it. There's a lot of trees. Remember, you are never alone as long as there are trees. We're in the middle of the ocean, there aren't any trees. Your boat is made of Yeah, from That's the, boat, true. the boat is made of tree corpses. Wait, what happens if someone casts true, retro, true resurrection on the boat? It uh, becomes it would... a bunch of trees. <laughs> uh, there's actually a thing for that. Oh my god. Okay, um, yes. So, new day. <laughs> Akko casting Speak with Dead on, on the ship, and all of the, all of the boards are having, like, a turf war. Oh yeah, it was a 21. This is oak territory. <laughs> Better skedaddle, you son of a birch. <laughs> so, what's everybody doing today? Uh, Piz is fixing the ship. I think Volko is bouncing between helping Biz fix the ship and helping Rukar patrol for threats. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, Rukar basically now just, not even like in the crow's nest, he, he'll, he'll mainly be in his crow's nest, but he'll occasionally like swoop down and fly around the ship with that new cube of dark vision to try and just, <laughs> just try and keep, like, keep a hand, like, just keep up to date on like anything going on around the ship. Any potential threat, just anything of notice. 
After the chase, very... yeah. After the chase, he's on high alert. <laughs> Biz so... walking on. Especially Biz walking on the underside of the ship with spider climb, <laughs> just like patching yeah, up the holes. Yeah, especially with the warning from Scarborough, like Scarborough. Scarboard. Scarboard, yeah. I do. And and his, and his Scarborough. And his brother Larboard. Aka's gonna take some time to trap the stars from the crow's nest while he got a pristine view of the sky. But mostly idle activity. Alrighty. I bet I bet Avos is up there too. <laughs> Just now. Avos the reason uh, Avos the, Avo the reason Aka got up there, I'm calling. <laughs> but yeah, Volko's bouncing between like whoever needs help at a time, whether that's like Damon with controlling the ship or Biz with repairing stuff. Patrolling, etc. He's like everywhere on the ship, all at once. <laughs> Alrighty. How they're so shimmery and sparkly. Um, Drex, think me. Oh. Perception check. Oh boy. Huh. Did, yeah, making me a perception check. Oh boy. A twenty. Damn, right. Okay. Yeah, um, you are charting out the stars, uh, and there is a second where you have to take a double take at the sky, because you are uh, recording a, seer a star formation, and when you look at back up, a section that you had just finished catches your eye, because there's a star missing from it, and you're you're baffled like what what how is there one missing, and as you're watching it. It slowly reappears, and you're very confused by this for a couple minutes before you realize there's, an, there's no clouds in the sky, but something passed in front of it. Oh. <laughs> but it only Fuck. passed in front of that star, so it's something in space. Oh boy. Chat, would you still love me if I were a worm? Um, <laughs> not not ominous at all. No, and definitely not an homage to the other camping space. Um, <laughs> another day goes by. As you all wake up the next morning. Morning in quotation marks. Or someone roll me a D8 and somebody roll me a D12. I got your D12. Alright, that's a 7 from Akko and an 8 from Valko. Uh, alrighty. Now I need two people to each roll me a 2d4. I'll do one. I will do the other. A four. Five. Nice. Alrighty. Then...
This is either really good or really bad. Or both. Uh -huh. Depending on who you ask. Hmm. Hmm. That's a powerful I just saw something fly in the corner of the vision on the map. Uh. <laughs> oh, I don't think I saw that. Oh boy. Hey, what's everybody's passive perceptions? Uh, my passive perception is a high and mighty 21. Seventeen. Nine? Nine? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, AT actually has a passive perception of eighteen. What? <laughs> <laughs> who needs to who needs to pay attention when my robot does it for me? Alrighty. Well, um Rukar, you spot this. You see Uh what on what side of the what side? Uh up here. Okay, uh, so I need, let, me get this, let me get my sheet out of the way. Oh, look, friends. Uh, uh, you see a group of mer creatures and large sharks swimming towards the ship. Oh. Alright. Okay, uh, uh -huh. if I. Yeah, uh, just, just do. Ah, there we go, much better. Uh, we call, we, uh, we call, we call everyone to come to this side of the ship. Like, hey guys, we got visitors. Hopefully friendly ones. Oh, that's... Hello. Does anybody speak Sahagan? <laughs> speak what? Sahagan. Can't say I do, Chief. Let me see what I got. No. <laughs> you have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> cool. I mean, someone has said the spell to just. Oh, wait. Someone yeah. did. And that yeah. person's not here. Yeah. <laughs> well, then. Ah, uh, man. It sure does suck not having a wizard. Therefore, you call, <laughs> you call a nerd in magic school. <laughs> I just need one more level, man, and then I can talk to anybody. <laughs> but not today. Uh, can I uh, try and answer back in uh, Primordial? Like, uh, hey, what do you guys want? Uh, you you say this, and they, the three of them just kind of like look at each other, just look back at you, and continue speaking in Sahagan. I don't, I don't understand this. I don't think we can communicate with them. Mm. Can I get- can I, like, try to do some sort of insight check to sort of, like, read the body language of, like, the mer people, or, like, figure out if they're at least, like, giving off some, like, threatening vibes, or, like, if they're just trying to have a chat, or, like... Yeah, go ahead and, and make an insight check. Make a, make a vibe check. A 13. A middling uh, vibe check. So they're, they're not, like, aggressive, and the sharks that are with them are kind of just, like, placidly swimming along. Uh, one does at, like, some, at one point come over and just, like, hop onto, like a, like, a slightly exposed board of the ship before letting go and just swimming on. Okay. <laughs> Sharks are just very big, very dangerous cats. I love how, like, every creature is just, like, some variant of cat, because I treat Volko's half-dragon stuff like a cat as well, like... <laughs> dragons are just big cats. Sharks are just water cats. Uh, Akko is a big cat. Akko is a big cat. Um, <laughs> but Volko sort of just... He tilts his head and is like, 
I don't think they mean any harm to us. You know, they didn't change the fact that we don't know what they want. I know, but it doesn't look like they're about to outright attack us, so we can take that solace in that. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of. Hey, maybe they're just conf maybe they they just like wanna wanna hear the lowdown on why the sun fell out of the sky and why it's always dark. I'd be pro I'd probably be pretty curious too. If I didn't know. Or they could be warning us of something nearby. Considering it, but would pantomime work? You could try. Okay, what are you shaping the water into? A puppet show? Alright, describe your puppet show. Basically, why, why, why are you here for? But, like, replicating the current scene, but question marks. Um, make me a performance check. <laughs> I mean, you. I mean, I mean, you went into this doing a puppet show, so you have no one to blame but yourself. Wow. Oh! <laughs> hey, hey, they just... Hey. They just kind of look at the puppet... At the, the water puppets, and then look up at you, look at each other, look at their sharks, look back at you, look at each other, shrug. <laughs> uh, what would I be able to make doing? a... Would I be able to make a performance check? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would I be able to make, like, a history check to sort of, like, recall, like... you? Like usual, like behaviors with the merfolk and their sharks. Like, is this, is just like swimming up to people like this normal, or would this have been caused by something approaching? Are we like intruding? Sure. History. That is a ten. A ten. Um. Actually, I'll make that a flash of genius. Why not? A fifteen. Fif fifteen. Um. So you know that. Uh, Sahagan are generally, like, they're generally an antagonistic people. Um, they, like, mechanically they are lawful evil. Um, and are referred to by many coastal, um, by many coastal settlers as sea devils. Uh, they don't really have compassion for other races, uh, other than themselves and their sharks. Um... They generally dwell in very deep section uh, sections of the ocean, uh, and they really don't like aquatic elves. Hmm. And they like do they like see normally, or is this like a sort of like? they don't understand why it's so dark, so they just think that this is also deep ocean. Well, you can presume since they came up to the surface and they're, like, in the air that they understand that this isn't the deep ocean. Mm. Okay, I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna shout that. Yes, hello, hi, hopefully, kind-hearted fish people, uh, we cannot help you, we do not understand what you are saying. Uh, after about another minute of, like, you guys not being able to communicate, they eventually just, like, kind of, like, flip over in the water and dive, uh, heading back down on water. Oh, well. 
wasn't was violent. That's oh, that's good. Yes, I don't know how much this, how much more combat this ship could take at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it is at this point that you hear a splash off the side of the ship, or the other side of the ship. Uh, right. Well, up to the other side of the ship. Uh, we'll go around. Do you mean other side, like over there? Like oh, okay. kind of over here. Okay. Right, hearing that splash, Vicar is gonna fly down over yeah. yeah, Volko's gonna run over. Yeah, so upon reaching uh, over there, uh, you can see two shapes uh, diving down into the water with... Uh, holding some objects as they as they swim deep, uh, deeper down. Uh, do I recognize those objects? Uh... Not, not immediately. Um, they're not. They're kind of small and hard to see. Like they're kind of like clutching them in their arms. Can I make a perception check to try to figure out what it is or who they are? Sure. Could I make one as well? Go for it. Alrighty. Perception. Twenty-four. Hey, those are other Sahagan. There's other Sahagan doing that? Yep. Akko, okay. you head down to the storage. Oh, no. um, you see that it has been rummaged through. Uh, and oh, the God. following <laughs> items are missing from your storage. Oh. No! <laughs> that Matt 20 was their stealth check, by the way. Aw. Dang, dude. Uh, can we, like, weigh yeah, anchor dude. and go after these guys? I kind of like having our stuff. Uh, well, here's the thing. Especially those crystals. We kind of need those. They didn't go out. They went down. Biz, how are we going to see the under the water? There's no light. I can't even swim that good. Uh... Rukar, use that cube. Uh, and this will, like, like, pound on their helmets. Like, God damn it, work. And as you look at Biz, you are... <laughs> Uh, blinded by, by there's like a lamp <laughs> turning on. Biz, you're missing the point. The wa that deep in the water is their territory. They they can swim faster than any of us can under that depth. <sighs> They're probably yeah. long gone by now. Well, well let's it. hope he didn't need that stuff. Some of that stuff could always probably get replaced. What we bought. What we... we still have the gold. You know, which to buy, like, more, like, to replace some of that stuff with, so, you know. Uh, yes, you say what? Crystals and the potions were probably the most important stuff they took. Yeah, and the potion can be easily bought back. We can buy all of that stuff back, but I don't yeah. think go. I don't think chasing them down to get it would be the smartest decision. Yeah, no, not especially not when the ship just went through hell and back just last, like just a couple of days ago. Because hmm. that was only like a small handful of them. I don't even know how many more were involved. Let's just let's maybe keep like, a rotating watch down there in case they come back. Mm -hmm. If they tried to catch us Actually, once, they'll try to catch us again. I have another idea. Uh, this will walk out to center of the deck uh, and ask for Garvon! Garvon? With a clap of thunder, you see a tall... Leonin standing there. Biz! What can I do for you today, my friend? Ah, uh, well. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have honeycomb, jade dust, uh, gold dust on you? I would I indeed. I have need of, of some of that. How much are you looking to purchase? 
at 25 in gold dust and 30 in jade and hunt coma. So you're looking, that would be 85 gold. Yes. Absolutely. And he will uh, reach into his uh, coat and pull out a jar each of our dirty looking ones. All right, perfect. Uh, this will hand over the gold. This should solve that thievery problem. I hope it will. And you as well. Seems I'm... What are the... Did he say it under his breath, or did he say that out loud for everyone to hear? It was said quietly. Okay. All right. I was about to say. I was about to say that. I was about to start like a whole other. Wait, what? Wait, you what? You can make huh? a perception <laughs> check if you wish to to have heard him. You know what? Yeah, I'll sure. Try I'll, I'll try. Why not? Oh fuck. Uh. <laughs> Seventeen. All right. Well, well shit. Yeah. And thank you, Garvan. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, all of you. All of you heard this. All of you heard this. It's, it's fitting that the significant other nat twenty to hear it. Those cat ears paying off. Thank uh, you, Garvan, for for the, for the product and nothing else. What? What was that about? Ready? Fizz. What did he mean? I I have old contacts through my guild. It's it was a uh, less than favorable arrangement on my end, but it's one that I am held to regardless. I prefer if we didn't have to talk about it. <laughs> oh my god, that was immediate. <laughs> I will make a deception deception check. I am making this with a flash of genius. That's a 24. Uh, Akko, you are... <laughs> Alright. Alright. Oh, I love it already. Hold up. Wait a minute. I was gonna say, are you gonna woe him? <laughs> God, Drex, Drex, this is a 14 versus a 24. Your D6. Alright, congratulations. This is a 14 versus a 21. <laughs> Akko, you genuinely believe that Biz is telling the truth. I would prefer if we didn't have to bring it up. It's... <sighs> it makes me very uncomfortable. All right, can we drop, please just drop it? And Biz will go down into the, into the storage room. And ritually cast Magic Mouth three times. Yes, tell us what Magic Mouth does, my good friend. Magic Mouth, basically, uh, it is a, a, a lingering spell you can place on any object and you can set conditions uh, to for, for it to trigger, and you can say any uh, passage of words, 25 words or less. So say, uh, I placed it on a barrel, and, it, and I commanded it to scream loudly when anyone who was not on the crew uh, got within, say, 15 feet of it or something. Please mark for me with an X. Which, uh, which ones you are casting this spell on? Right, let's see. Uh, now, let's see. Within 30 feet of the object, so... Uh, I'm just gonna... Hold on. So, I could probably... Uh, I'll have one... I'll have one on a floorboard. That's just in this corner. Right here. Okay. Uh, another on a barrel right around here. And another on this crate. And so they just yell uncontrollably when anyone who is not on this crew uh, Goes goes within thirty feet of them, or goes within range of uh, the storage hold. So, 
Oh. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want them to to start screaming when someone's like right off the bow, but not inside. That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> the ship just starts screaming every time a fish shows up. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Middle of the night, just. <gasps> Rukar just calls down. Uh, don't worry, guys. It's a tuna. <laughs> I'll, pro I'll probably uh, just get it to, like, anything that's above, that's at or above, like, CR one quarter. I think that sounds, so just, it would get rid of any, like, random fish. <laughs> Alright. Or bug, or bug. Ah, but you see, CR half bun. <laughs> <laughs> what is the CR of a bun? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pro probably zero. Oh man, them things hurt. <laughs> uh, and that is what the Jade and Honeycomb is for. The Gold Dust, however, is for a different spell. That is for Arcane Lock. Mm -hmm. uh, Biz is going to take uh, an old, like, strong box that's just sort of, like, rusty and covered in old coral that Biz just sort of kept around but never had any use for. Uh, and is going and when he has some time alone, he's going to start writing on parchment on for a special message. Locked in this box to only open uh, when either a command word is a specific word is is given or Biz dies. Okay, please write the details for that in the treasure section of the character sheet. Alright. I haven't actually gotten any specifics now, so I'll probably get get to that after the session. Yep, that is fine. Oh my god, Tinwi. What? But listen to the fucking music right now. Is this, or does this not, sound like the opening to the Magnus Archives? Hold on. It's got those vibes. I like it. Hold on. I'm holding. I swear it was like right around here somewhere. Oh, whoops. No, I didn't mean to do that. That, that, that fucking, like, three-note thing, I swear, that's, like, <laughs> after they announce the episode title and shit like that, that is the fucking... Yeah. <laughs> it's the violin. It's, it's, it's that violin. Oh my god, I can't believe they use Bleak Water Docks by Tabletop Audio for the night of the <laughs> Something tells me they don't. It's not that. I know, but... I know, I know. It's literally, like... <laughs> three seconds of this audio that's like the same yeah. notes. <laughs> a glyph of awarding as well? I that, w that was a misclick. Okay, okay. I'm saving that for something else. I will state that like with the whole object can't move a certain distance thing, that's in relative to the thing that it's in. So basically you can cast glyph of awarding on like the shit that's on the ship. <laughs> without it going off because the ship is moving. Namely. Yeah. I would I, I would sure hope so. Otherwise the wizard who designed it probably <laughs> would have made that change. The, basically I think like the whole purpose with you can't move the object it's on more than like ten feet is because they don't want players to turn rocks into grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Using glyph oh, of why wording. not? Granted, I don't think it would happen because it costs 200 gold per casting. Yeah, and the damage is not worth it. Yeah. I think I rem remember hearing uh, a story uh, where some guy cast glyph of wording on a whole bunch of rocks that he had in a bag, all set to the same command word. And it's like bombs away as he threw down one, not realizing all of the other ones in his bag shared that word. Oh um, no. Oh. And just admised himself. Whoops. 
<laughs> yeah, like that's the thing that that particular set of text is supposed to stop. Like, let's say you cast you you you're in one of the games that has like a year of downtime, you know, and you cast Glyph Awarding on a whole bunch of rocks, load them into a catapult, fire them at a city gate or something. Yeah, DM. So uh, about seven hundred fireballs all go off wherever this hits. <clears throat> Anyway, so I've been crafting a whole bunch of beads of fireball over this year of downtime. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Oh. I sure hope I don't take any fire damage. You, you pull the string on the catapult, and like as soon as it fires, two of the beads like clack together, and they all go off <laughs> before they fire. Anyway, <laughs> uh, biz. <laughs> So, you're set, you're setting up, right? You're you're the only one down here. You are back here in the cargo hold, right? Yep. You're setting up your magic mouse. They have not been activated yet, and you hear thump. Oh. They make an investigation check. Absolutely. That's a nut oh. one. Oh, no. Good job! So you are searching around when you feel a knife slip around your neck. Well, actually, it's not a knife. It's a, like, they're grabbing your, your throat from behind, like, pressing claws in. Hmm. Mm. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. But, and can Biz like sort of like turn around to face him slowly? And, like, no, sort of, like, a... they, no, they're like holding you in like a like you can you can just tell from like the way that you're being held and the claws is like move like if you move it's there it's going to attack you, mm. which it will okay. get a free hit in. Hmm. Wow. You aren't supposed to be here. Do you know that? Most, most of your friends have left. And Biz is going to try and just sort of bide time. Just sort of like, sort of like, ideally shift himself as like a... Into a position where he can back, where he can sort of like, elbow the dude and sucker punch, sucker punch him. <laughs> With oh yeah, no biz. You let's see. Or is he like holding me tight and I can't move all that much? You can tell like you are a bit stronger than than this creature. Um, as yeah, you are able to to like kind of shift in its grasp, and you think that you do have a good opportunity to get hidden. All right. Probably not surprised, because I think this guy's expecting me to do something. So I'm yep. just gonna roll normal. That's an 11 to hit. Uh, you punch him uh, in the stomach, uh, and you do a hit, but it's like you don't think that your hit really got through his scales. Mm. Uh, and he's going to get a free hit on you. For three that slashing will... damage. Okay. Three slashing. Sweet. Is Did anyone... the initiative. Did hey. anyone hear the scuffle down below or no? Nope. Oh, fun. Thirteen. Ready? Nobody, oh. nobody hears this. Well, you've thrown a wrench in my gears, and I don't quite- and I like all my tools being in order. Bonus action, clack on the helmet, uh, and it's going to strike this guy. So, it is now your turn, so you get your full action and bonus action, and all that. Okay, yeah. But yeah, go for it. Alright, and these thunder gauntlets, they're thunder. They're loud. People are gonna hear this. 16 plus uh, 6. Two hits. 23. Nice. Bing. Boom. That's 20 damage. Thunder damage. 
you hit him once, twice, and he goes down. Like, he is, like, on the ground, coughing, um, like, coughing up blood. Uh, Beas is going to grab their neck and, like, hold them up. Tell me what you're doing here. Why did you stick around? I was, although, I suppose... Well, I can't really understand you. I'm just going to punch him again to put him out of his misery. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Yeah, um, you hit him for a third time, and you literally can't roll low enough on damage, um, and you kill him. I would like everybody else to deafen. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, but he- All right, bye. Biz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You, as you land the, the killing blow on this creature, you feel uh, your connection uh, to Dimitri. Nice. Would you like to sacrifice this soul to Dimitri? I would. I have no qualms sending a soul of a Sahaga to him. On your sheet, your piety level is now on one. That is basically how many... How many souls are in your bank with Dimitri? It doesn't have anything to do with, like, how devilish you are or anything like that. That's just our way of keeping track of it. Yeah. Um, as the creature's soul is sucked out of its body, it sort of deflates. And soul coalesces into a glowing ball which you feel a compulsion bring up the hand that's not holding its throat kind of grab the soul and just squeeze it in your hand know that it has been sent one of many May you enjoy that. And the party can undeafen now. Hello. Hello. Hope you had fun. So the rest of you heard a couple quick booms from the underside, uh, from, from the lower decks of the ship. Yeah, Volko would have sprinted down there upon hearing the crashing. Uh, you see Biz holding a Sahagen dead, <laughs> just by the throat in the air. The body of the Sahagen is wilted and kind of like it has been, almost like it's been dried out in the sun, like it turning into a... What happened down here? Somehow he sneaked aboard and did not trigger the magic mouths. Which means I need to fix that. This was before you set up those magic mouths. I'm saying, like, you you went down there to set them up and you heard this noise. Okay, alright, I see. Well, and that is why we need uh, to have some magic mouths down here. To detect whenever someone breaks in and drops the body as if it meant nothing. I feel like it... uh, Is, like... Does this the I don't know, Volko seems to take that as a bit like out of character, more violent than Biz usually is, damn. I don't like Sahagan. Right. Not many people on the seas do. I'm also, also they aware. stole their stuff. I I'm aware. Just let's take care of the body. Yeah. Volko like walks over to help Biz with doing that. But is like kind of keeping a careful eye on him. Volko, you lift up the body and it is incredibly light compared to what it should be. Uh, he'll take a mental note of that, but not say anything about it. No, yeah, I did hear, but Bees mentioned this being salvage gear stuff. 
They don't like talking about the good Beth and what happened. <laughs> I was so confused for a second. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it shelved you and Sir Hoggins and that's your enemies. They often fought for scraps, isn't it? Do, do Sir Hoggins? Hako, you can't kill God. That means you have to kill Tinway. <laughs> do, do Sir Hoggins normally dry up when dead like that? No. Oh. <laughs> no, that's just some new tech I'm working on. This seems a bit overtuned, if you ask me. Um, That's saying something. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, tosses it overboard like a rag in the wind. I don't know the the. Okay, I did it. I is hoping that the Hoggins don't see that and take it as a message of war. We don't. don't uh, Volko that. is gonna lean over to Akko and mutter, "Biz really dislikes Sahagin that much." Seems a bit. Watch the than setting usual. zone next time, honey. I upset. What's up? Oh, no. Oh, no. Fucking, fucking, like, Akko is talking, but is, like, unable to act. Like, Akko's voice doesn't actually come out, and behind Akko. <laughs> Behind the Akko, you just see this little creature talking for oh Akko. God. It's a worm! It's a worm! Congratulations, you've met the jester. I want to grab what... the creature. You, you attempt to grab the creature, and it is now in a different position. Yay, more, more it's, deities. It's, it's giving Adventure Time, Shermie. Mmm, check please. Oh. This is the jester. It is one of the crow's vestiges. Volko is gonna continue to try to grab the creature. It just every time you go to grab it, you blink and it is gone in a different spot. Do I know it's the crow's vestige, or like, is you... this just like a little shadow creature? Volko, you've got that taste in the back of your throat that you get every time you see the crow. <laughs> Alright, fail, fail, valid. <laughs> you, you know, you know what the crow's about at this point to recognize that this is the embodiment of its, like, shit eating grin. Eventually, he just gives up trying to grab it and just tries to shoo it away from Akko instead. It just looks at you giggle like makes like a, a, a um like it looks like it's giggling but no sound comes out and then it vanishes Volko <laughs> snarls in its direction anyway i'm i'm sorry if i seem a bit on edge that i didn't i didn't expect garvan to let that slip Ugh. damn merchants why are they always so mouthy We've all got our secrets. Don't worry about it. If you don't want to tell us, you don't have to. Thank you, Vaka. Alrighty. Um, oh, Nako's talking. My bad. Uh, let's see. There is still a couple. One. I think there's two vestiges that you still have. We've met the storyteller and we've met the jester. You met I the storyteller, I... the jester, and the silence between heartbeats. I think you've also, like, shown a couple to me. Oh yeah, I've shown you them. Um, oh, you've also um, you haven't met it, but you've seen the Watcher before. Yeah, what's, that little that little thing. What's the sounds between heartbeats? I don't remember that. So remember uh, the being that looked like it was like all wrapped in bandages that was talking to Volko at one point. It was when Volko called tried to call his favor in on the crow. Yeah, this guy oh. showed up. It was the silence that answered. Uh, uh, it's okay. Let's just hope it doesn't come up in front of the students. It'll pick on you to no end. Let's, let's help. 
Yeah, when we make it to when we make it to the Clendride. Well, I think I'm going to go back to patrolling the ship and make sure no more of those Hagen are around. With any well, luck, those magic mouths should uh, make it a bit easier. They'll start uh, screaming at the top of their non-existent lungs whenever something that is not part of the crew enters that room. <laughs> so, yeah. That seems like a yeah. good idea to have around. Yeah, I'm not sure why I didn't set that up earlier. <laughs> we get robbed a lot. Well, we don't get robbed. We just get stowaways quite frequently, surprisingly. I think this is the third time either a robbery or a stowaway has made off with some of our stuff. Yes, because uh, there was Vorshin. The little, Vorshin. the little um, deep sea triton gremlin yep. creature. Um, what was the second time? I know there was the Banshee that was on the ship, but that was just kind of fucking with you. I think it was just, like, a different uh, pod of Sohagen that stole some stuff. Those harpies tried to steal your food, but you guys beat the shit out of them real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Walco is going to go back to patrolling, so he's going to go back up top, top side of the ship and meander. Yeah. Uh, Biz is going to go back to his room and start working on the Archean lock and the stuff to go inside it. And that is where I'm going to leave for now, because I have dinner with my family. Yes. This has um, been a lot of fun. I was uh, actually going to um, put the session on pause uh, here because uh, I would like to have most of the people with us uh, for the next big stuff. Um, and, uh, as she said, uh, we have a birthday girl here heading off for oh, dinner. Thank you. Uh, so can we get some happy birthdays for Heather and chat? Um, but I believe that, that this is where we are going to end tonight's session. I know it was real short, uh, and I apologize for that, but I am hoping to have some really big, exciting sessions, uh, in the future. Thanks, guys. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Heather. Ah. Uh, and so, let's see if we can find somebody to raid. So, let's see if we can find somebody to raid. Uh. That is echoing on myself. Alrighty. Um, we're gonna go raid Small Ant's mom because she's lovely. Um. <laughs> she's just, uh, chatting today. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you guys over to her. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, we'll have another session of the Age of Stars next Saturday, and our next Age of Stars in two weeks. Sunday, 5pm Central Standard Time. Um, I'm hoping to run a much longer, much more, um, exciting session next time. But I hope you all enjoyed tonight. Well, until Yay. then, bye-bye! Yeah. Bye.